be up. So if we just stick with the same time, we'll have sunrise tomorrow. Maybe we'll do that. So tomorrow we'll have, uh, we just stick with the same clock time here. Uh, if your country does not change uh, to winter time tomorrow, you're going to have um, I don't know, you'll have to work it out. <laughs> it's too early for me. <laughs> I'm on pretty rough ground here. I can't show it to you because nothing will show up on the camera. But you can see the Sea of Galilee already emerging little by little into the light. It was always there, but it's, in, it's semi invisible. And we're going to have lovely, lovely clouds. I can see that. I'm going away from them now, so my camera is turned backwards as I walk forwards. And the ground is kind of uneven. I have to keep my eye on it a little bit. And the cows have decorated it here, but that's relatively easy to notice. So today is a little darker, so maybe we can ponder that time of morning prayer. Or just simply morning reflection. Even those who maybe are not praying, just out in nature, just taking stock of things, pondering life. This is a precious time. Less cars this morning because it's Shabbat. This beautiful feature of life here in Israel, a lot stops for Shabbat. That's Migdal. And up there in the hill in the distance is Svat. And here we're seeing more of the Sea of Galilee across toward the Golan and eventually down to Jordan. So I'm going to try and get a little bit more height for you. It's easier to walk in the light than in the dark. You all know that even in your room at night time, you turn on the light if you wake up and need to move. And in this type of terrain, all the more so. And life has difficult terrain, sometimes we need the light. It's a bit steep here, but that's good because we're gaining significant height in the process. If you bear with me another minute, we'll be up to a, a little bit more plateau area, and then we can have a better view.
Now we can see a lot more of the lake. And the clouds are getting a little pinker. The camera's not picking that up so well. But with more light that will happen. So I think the next five to 10 minutes will be splendid. There we have our morning star. I don't know if you can see it. Come on, morning star, where are you? I don't see it on the screen, strangely. But I'm pointing the camera. And it's plenty bright here. Oh, there it is, it's right in the center of the screen. You see the morning star? always there the morning star the early church gave that name to Mary the morning star because of the incredible blessings the full of grace and even though the sun had not risen, Christ had not arrived, it was a title given to her because of the evangelical virtues we re see in her, the faith, the docility to God's will, the fullness of grace, the total response, let it be done unto me according to your word, the morning star. And in a certain sense, you're a morning star yourself for many people who don't know of faith and hope and God's will. And they don't even know the terms, the meaning of these words. And it's outside of their experience, their pondered experience. And your life is truly a morning star because they're experiencing the goodness through you. So you're a morning star among many people. I don't know if you can see along here. I want to get up to a bush that's way up here. And that's another marker of another level of height and a good view over the sea. Although it's getting good already. We have very, very beautiful readings this morning. There's somebody else here on the road. Semi singing. You can't see them, he has a light walking along, but I don't think you can see them way down there. Here we have some thorn bushes. So we're basically up to the first plateau here, if you will, of Mount Tarbell. Wow, the color's really coming here. I think you're going to have a delight today, a real nice delight. If you have any friends there, share with them because it's a good time to join us in terms of just experience of, of dawn and nature. Call them in. some nice rocks here that might 
find a nice stopping spot to read and to mount the little hand tripod. tremendous howling of jackals last night up here yeah I think this is our spot for this morning I think this will be a good spot for us we don't have too much more height to gain by going further at this point and we have a very nice spot to view everything The readings this morning are all about personal growth, fulfillment, in the greatest meaning of the word fulfillment, and community growth. Just scanning Mount Arbel for you. There are the northeastern cliffs. And we can't see the southeastern ones because they're blocked by the contours of the hill here. off my sticks here off my hand sorry for the instability that's my rock here or your rock and it's a great one because it's um, it's right close to another one where I can even sit down So there's your rock and my rock. Good. Let's see how this works here. There are even little holes on the rock here for the legs of the tripod. And we can adjust it in different ways, hopefully. That's not bad. It's at an angle, but you can live with that. I'd like to, for you to see the color that I see on the clouds, but my screen doesn't show. Oh, there we have a little bit more. Not really. They're a little pinker than you're seeing. At least that's my impression. Let's see, that's probably the best light take at the moment right there in that position. And here we have a good scan of most of the Sea of Galilee. This small little cliff edge here is blocking the southern part in Tiberias. And I'd say you have at least two thirds of the surface of the Sea of Galilee right in front of your eyes. I even see Mount Hermon. But that's too much to ask for you right now. Maybe when this, when we're closer to finishing, we should take a sweep around there to see it. Oops, sorry about that. It seems to be a little ratcheting on this. It doesn't 
allow me to stop anywhere I want. It goes in steps like a stairs. Hmm. That's not bad. That's a nice spot. A sweet spot. So welcome to Dawn Stroll and Chat. And this is the last of this week's series, I think, because tomorrow if we start at the same time, um, you know we might even start a few minutes before six, which will be equal to seven today. So it will be just uh, around sunrise. So I think we'll start a few minutes before six tomorrow morning. the color is coming on the water more at least the light is hitting the water stronger now Good. excellent so let's read a little bit from from scripture and we're still with the letter to the Ephesians incredibly rich letter so powerful in expressions and today's no won't disappoint us either brothers and sisters grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift and we know that that's poured out richly The one who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. And then it talks about the different roles. He gave some as apostles, others as prophets, others as evangelists, others as pastors, as teachers. Why? For them? No. To equip the holy ones. The holy ones are is the term that was used in the very early church in the very beginning for the ones who were sealed with the seal of the Holy Spirit the seal of baptism and the seal of faith you know the seal and the word in in Latin is sanctire which also has another word to sanction it's another application etymologically from that word to sanction so the sealed ones were called sancti and they were they were sealed they were made holy they were given completely to god they were god they were completely in god's kingdom this whole idea as a, a thrust forward as a as a dedication to equip the holy ones so with all of these different roles evangelists apostles prophets pastors teachers to equip the holy ones for the work of ministry wow so that means all the holy ones had a ministry That means they were all servants. A minister means to serve. They were all they were all to be equipped for service. For building up the body of Christ. And listen to this, until we all attain to the unity of faith. And today we look at the landscape okay we're emphasizing and correctly so all the points of unity we have which is very important but we also have lots of tensions and challenges and 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 agitators of division until we attain to the unity of faith and knowledge of the son of god to mature manhood we could say to mature humanity to reach the maturity of our humanity to the extent of the full stature of Christ 
Look at all these words. Building up. That we will all attain to the unity of faith. And knowledge to mature humanity. To the full stature of Christ. So that we may no longer be infants. And an infant is lovely. You just saw pictures in the last couple of days of Rachel and Carlos's little baby. We celebrated a couple of weeks ago when the baby was born. I'm not sure if it's a couple of weeks already. And it's just so beautiful to see that little infant. And everybody dotes over them, especially mom and dad and grandma and little siblings. But in this case, they're, she's the first. Um, Carol Magdalena. And they're little infants, but they have to grow to the full stature of Christ. And when do you finish growing? Not when you're 16 or 18 or 21 or 25 or until you start going downhill. We're growing every day till our last breath in faith, hope and love. So that we may be no longer infants, tossed by waves and swept along by every wind of teaching. Today there are no waves, it's so calm. Rather, living the truth in love, we should grow in every way. In other words, grow, build, mature, develop, become fulfilled. We should grow in every way into him who is the head, Christ, for whom the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament, with the proper functioning of each part, brings about the body's growth. Again, the growth and builds itself up in love. And that's all the community aspect, the whole body building up. Each one of us growing to full stature in Christ and all growing in unity together to build up the full body of Christ. What a vision we have and how we need to refresh the vision because, you know, that's a very interesting line from the prophets. Which prophet was it who said, without a vision my people will die we human beings need a vision we need to have a goal we need to have a program a point to develop toward and that's usually articulated also by people proposing plans for civic development and also church development a vision Without a vision, my people die. And then the, the issue then is how we develop the vision. What are the sources for our vision? How do we um, conceive? What are our values? Our values are reflected in our vision. What's the scope of our thinking? The, the treasures we are pursuing? And the psalm is very beautiful for all of us. Psalm 122 Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. All the pilgrims going to Jerusalem for thousands of years going rejoicing to the house of the Lord. And this is one of the songs of ascent going up to Jerusalem. Psalm 122 Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. And I let you in on a little secret. The last two times I told you it was a secret, but <laughs> next Saturday we have our monthly retreat in Jerusalem. So a week from today, God willing, we'll see a sunrise in Jerusalem. A sunrise over Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoice because they said to me, we will go up to the house of the Lord and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. We go up rejoicing to give thanks to the name of the Lord. The parable in the gospel is in the same lines about growth. It's God's expectation about us. You know, we have that kind of a slogan out there, I'm okay, you're okay. Well, first of all, we're completely loved by God. So we don't have to prove anything to God to make him love us. That's not the way it happens. 
Love is much more gratuitous, more even in human relationships. Although we could cunningly try to woo love, but genuine love is, is gratuitous. And it's because of the person. Otherwise it could be a form of selfishness. It could be a type of affection that's, that's given to gain an advantage. But at the same time that God loves us so much, we, God wants us to grow and to bear fruit. So there's the parable of the fig tree. So that's telling us that we should bear figs. A fig tree should bear figs. What good is an orange tree that doesn't produce oranges or a banana tree that doesn't produce bananas? And we're to love to encourage, to live building up. So people, thank you so much for joining us this morning here at the Sea of Galilee on Mount Arbel overlooking the Sea of Galilee. And now you can see Mount Hermon, I think. Let me focus for you. Yes, you see that sh uh, lighter shade behind the Mount of Beatitudes? Actually, the Mount of Beatitudes is in the screen right now, and you can see a little bright point of light in the grove of trees over on the right side, just above the water. And then the Mount Hermon is behind that ridge there. And again, we have our beloved mountains looking into Lebanon. And we can see there's the one spot over here that I've grown to love just to watch it because this one here, you see that little point that's sticking up there in the center of the screen? That's actually in Syria. And the Syrian and Lebanese peoples are in great need today. We need to pray for them and in any way that's in our uh, zone of, of possibility to even do more than prayer, to do something practical. There we have other tinges of sunrise coming, but that's going to take another 25 minutes. So you can see it on Instagram if you wish to join me there. And then we're looking down towards uh, Jordan. So here from the Sea of Galilee, God bless you. Thank you for joining today. See you later.